Do you think that the childhood sexual abuse and trauma is what led you to ultimately get this diagnosis with DID? Absolutely is the first answer to the question. Mm -hmm. But what does that look like? What we don't understand and what I don't think is talked enough about when we talk about mental health, we forget that it's also in the body. It was not my mind that needed help. It was my body that was storing the trauma and my body was responding to trigger points, to implicit memories. So it was the activation of the trauma in my body that led me to getting treatment. Annalyn, I don't, I don't want us to go any further in this without me saying, and from Dr. O, I'm sure as well, that I'm so sorry that that happened to you, to that eight-year-old little girl, because she didn't deserve that. And, and no eight-year-old girl should have to go through that. Um, and as we're talking about the symptoms, and you're so beautifully describing what you felt in your mind and in your body, I want to just take this time to highlight some of the symptoms for dissociative identity disorder, right? There's the disassociation, which means there's a disconnect between my thoughts and my feelings. And Anna Lynn, I am sure you can agree with this. Also, there's a disconnect with your behavior, right? Mm -hmm. some, days, some days you're there, but you're like, what? And there's an amnesia that goes with it. In the most extreme state, it's a fugue state. You, know, you hear these stories where people say, well, yeah, I, I really don't know what happened those last four or five hours or the last week, or I just kind of blacked out. There's also those intrusive thoughts. And at the extreme end of that spectrum, it's self-harm. And Lynn, I've, t mm -hmm. I've heard you talk beautifully about it. And one of the things as a psychiatrist that I want everybody to know is just because somebody is self-harming, it doesn't mean they want to die. It just means mm -hmm. they're trying to feel something and trying to yeah. get some level of release. Absolutely. Yeah. And one of the big telltale symptoms is this feeling of I'm there, but it's not really me. Right. I'm just kind of mm -hmm. I, I my body is here, but my consciousness is somewhere over here just kind of watching me go through the motions. You never feel all quite there. It's almost like there's a larger part of you that's numb. Have you ever felt any of these? Actually, doctor, I experienced that this week. Mm. So on Tuesday, something came up. Healing yeah. is a lifetime journey. And I was trying to do the, use the tools and do a repair on something that I was feeling and, and I felt was a theme that was circling around. And I went back in my mind to my early 20s. And this was when I had brought my sisters out mm. to live with me here in Los Angeles. I could not remember them. Wow. They are not in my memories. I intellectually know they lived in my house. We went to events together. We, went, we did everything together. I can't see their faces. And what my doctor had helped me with because of my disassociation and these, these blackout points, which would include people's faces, parts of buildings would disappear entirely mm. from my mind. And I would know something was there, but I can't see it. I knew there was shame here. And I started looking and I ended up getting on a phone call with my two sisters and apologizing to them because wow. I couldn't see them in my memory because I never saw them. The wow. altar that I was around my sisters to protect myself from our, my triggers of my childhood actually caused me to just block them out almost altogether. And I was disassociating at such a high rate that I don't remember them. Yeah. So this is so real. And you have depicted the symptoms in such a beautiful way for people to understand, which I could not have fathomed that if I didn't have my doctor explain this to me. Yeah. 